Okay. You can go. Thank you, Kim. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 28, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings at this time. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting, which follows the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2800. Three nine, any time after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. And with this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Raymond, to read the legal notice. The Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, April 28, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application number 4995-20, Marianne and Jeff Lindquist seeking to replace the front steps with stone and stone veneer steps at 46 Oldham Road. Application number 4996-20, renewal by Anderson seeking to install nine replacement windows, one replacement entry door, and one patio door at 27 Wilcox Street. Application number 4997-20, Christina Cantwell seeking to install solar panels on rear roof of home and on front garage roof with electrical panel on rear of the home at 14 Avalon Place. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. The meeting may be viewed live on Cox Channel 16 or Frontier Channel 6101. Live participation is available by audio format. Any, res any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should, should email HDC comments at Weathersfield Connecticut or weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent phone number or audio access. Please include your name, a phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 13th day of April, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Raymond. Hey, Doug, I'm gonna, do you want me to take attendance for you since you can't see? Sure, that would be fine. Sorry. Not a problem. Okay, so our commissioners are um, Doug Ovian, Chris Lyons, Mark Raymond, Claire Mead, Emily Zambrello, and Vasek Miglis. Is that, did I miss anybody? Okay. That's great. And between uh, Vasek and Emily, who last had the chance to participate? I think it was Vasek who voted last. Okay. If that's the case, boss, if we would welcome your participation today, but uh, Emily would be the voter. That's good. Okay. Thank you. So 
Thank you very much, uh, Kim, for getting us started there, and uh, to Gary for your assistance in uh, moderating. Uh, it, so we'll start with the agenda application number 4994-20, Brian Wolf, the project at 20 Main Street. Go ahead. I'm not talking for you. <laughs> Hi, this is Brian Wolf, 20 Main Street. Um, and we are looking to replace our front steps. So today they are um, brownstone with um, bluestone top and we are replacing same width, which is five feet wide, but we are going to expand the landing to be up to code. So currently it's 18 inches deep. We're going to 36 inches. Um, same two steps down from that to ground level. Um, we'll have a dark gray granite topper and we have, um, it's called Brooklawn Blend Stone Ledge. Thompson. Excellent. We thank you for all the documentation that was provided. All the commissioners, although we're meeting virtually, have been provided with uh, documentation in advance of the meeting that um, accurately uh, reflects uh, what you are proposing to do, okay. at least as far as I can see. Yeah, well, there is a picture. It's not necessarily the exact um, stone, but it looks really, really close. So it was kind of a, an idea of what the kind of finished product would look like with the dark gray granite and you know similar to the Brooklawn blend ledge um, and the wrought iron railings. So Wait. But you do, Thank you. but you do have uh, the, you do have the sample of the stone in the packet. So, right, yes, there's samples of what each individual component would look like, but then there is a picture that shows what it would look like in totality. That's great, Brian. Are there uh, any questions of any of the commissioners for Mr. Wolf? A uh, question on the risers. The risers are going to be what? Um, they're going to be covered in that Brooklawn blend ledge rock. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that was Mr. Miglis for the record. Uh, this is Claire. So the um, railings are going to look like the picture in the snow with the white. Yes. Yes, correct not like the final picture. The final picture was just to show us a, a simulation of the stone, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. the, the combination of the stone with the railing, the, the central look that it would give yeah. off. But yes, the railing itself will be the kind of that straight edged um, okay. example in that. They're both fair, they're fairly picture. similar to each other. There's no adornment, there's no twist, there's nothing. It's just straight wrought iron. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Any other questions of any other commissioners for the applicants? Anything else from the applicants for the commission? Nope. Hearing none, I will uh, thank you for joining us this evening, Brian. And I uh, will ask at this time if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none. I will move to uh, application number 4995-20, the Lindquist application at 46 Oldham Road. Is there a participant or are we acting on the papers? She's here, I'm, I'm unmuting her now. Hi, Hi Marian. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Welcome. If you could oh. just identify yourself for the record, please. <clears throat> yes, this is Marian Lindquist from 46 Oldham Road. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be back. So uh, if there's anything you'd like to let us know in addition to the documentation submitted, uh, this would be a good time for that. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, it's, um, let's see, I'm just looking at my description here from Phil Rukier, who was planning on joining us and I'm, I'm not sure what happened. He had every intention of joining us as of even today. So perhaps he had difficulty um, joining. And for the record, that's uh, our uh, mason for this project. Yes, it is. address 410 Church Street. 
Thank you. Is where he lives. Yes, I can spell if you'd like. Okay. At um, point, at this point, I could ask the commissioners if they have any questions for you, since there was uh, documentation provided here. If that would okay. give you uh, a chance to uh, collect your thoughts as to whether or not there's anything else you need to add. Oh, any I actually, anything I, from the commissioners? So the railings are going to be reused. Okay, so we only have, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so we only have a step and then the, and then the, the um, platform or whatever, so I guess we don't need a railing by code and we're planning on removing it, removing the railing. And also, just for the record, we're not replacing the steps, we're refacing them, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're not like taking the steps down, so he's gonna put, um, the um, dark gray granite on the treads and platform and then it's going to be that Liberty Hill Ashler pattern um, for the uh, risers going right over what we have and then we're putting in a new walkway but I know that I don't need that approval for that thank you that was Vasek's question any other questions of any other commissioners for the applicant Anything else that the applicant would like to add at this time? I don't think so. I think in <laughs> that's fine. We thank okay. you very much for uh, working with our coordinator to prepare for this evening. And um, oh well, I thank yeah, him very much because here we delivered a, a piece of slab to her doorstep. But you know, <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> She's incredibly accommodating. We're very yes, she accounting. certainly is, and I thank you very, very much for guiding me through this. No problem. Again. It's weird right now, so. <laughs> thank you again. So at this okay. point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, we'll move to application number 4996-20, the renewal by Anderson Project at 27 Wilcox Street. Is there uh, an applicant here this evening for yep. that, or are we taking this on the papers? He's Somebody here. needs to unmute her. I um, unmute. I am I unmuted? Oh, sorry, I. Yeah. I am. Hi, this is Denise Freeman with Renewal by Anderson. I am the project coordinator, working with Mrs. Uh, Connie Haskins, and um, this is actually phase two of the job. Uh, we did, um, and the historic committee approved back in March of 2013, phase one. Uh, so we did some windows on the first floor. Uh, we are finishing the windows on the second floor and in the back of the house. Um, so everything will match what was already approved for the first phase. Um, we are replacing, as it says, uh, nine uh, windows, uh, they're double hung windows, a uh, patio door and also a front entry door. Everything basically will match what's there now, obviously, except there'll be double pane energy efficient windows uh, with full screens. Uh, the color will match the existing color, which is the uh, dark bronze. Um, it's gonna keep the same exact uh, grill pattern, which is four wide by two high. Um, everything will be done uh, we're doing these as replacement windows, but we will match the existing trim perfectly. Um, so, you know, everything will match the uh, first phase. Thank you. Okay. The I noticed that we have the uh, typical order summary that comes to us from Renewal by Anderson. Uh, in addition, in this circumstance, we also have uh, the wonderful uh, photographs uh, and drawings that uh, annotate the photographs. So we appreciate that additional documentation. I think uh, it's helpful to us since we have uh, an example in the building already of uh, much of the work. So are there any questions of any commissioners for the applicant at this time? And if you could just identify yourself first, Maybe it, uh, Linda, our uh, reporter already can see who's talking, uh, but because I don't have the picture, uh, I can't. 
So question on the entry door. This is Vatsik. Uh, Thank you. The existing door is a six panel door with no lights. And that's, I assume you're replacing with exactly the same thing? Yes, we are replacing like for like, basically. Everything will be okay. the same. Um, and it will be a, um, uh, the color is a, uh, we, we call it, uh, let's see here. It's a deep blue color. Okay. Uh, for the door. Yep. All right. Can I just interject for one second? On the um, order form, it did state that their grills were in between the glass. And I just want to, um, I did talk with the um, Southern New England Windows representative that submitted the application and asked him um, to have them match the original that was not grills between the glass. Did that happen? Well, no, because the homeowner, the original, the replacement windows that we replaced were in the first phase were done with grills between the glass. There's, I, I pulled the, the application from 2013 and it was a stipulation that required the, um, the grills to not be between the glass. They were supposed to be applied muttons with the spacer in between. Okay. That was a stipulation required. The ones that are, I believe, that are there now are the grills between the glass because the price difference is extreme. And even in with other historical, you know, uh, groups that I've worked with, if you think about it, when you have the storm windows there and the old windows, you know, the the grills, even if they're that full divided light grill, is behind that glass anyway. So it really is like a a grill between the glass, even the original ones. These are very lifelike. They, you know, you actually have to go up and and touch them to see if, you know, if they're, if they're, you know, mounted outside the glass or not. So the customer, and I'm not sure about, um, like I said, I, the, the ones that were there now, I'm pretty sure were grills between the glass. And also because they're on the second floor where it would be very difficult to even see them from the street level. It adds such a large expense that, you know, the customer wanted to do the grills between the glass. Also because it's harder to clean the windows, it's, you know, they collect more dust. So there's a lot of reasons why the grills between the glass are very popular. But even being that the, on the second floor, they're so high up that it's virtually, you know, it's, it's difficult to see whether they're, you know, actual full divided light or, or the grills between the glass. And again, many other um, jobs that we've done, historic jobs, they've allowed them because when you think about having the storm window in front of the original window, those grills are behind that glass anyway. So she did not want to take the, because it's literally thousands of dollars more to do the, the full divided light. And being that um, you know, it's on the second floor, um, you know, she was hoping that they would be done uh, with the grills between the glass. Well, this is the same homeowner, I assume, as the, uh, the, the person who owned the house when the work, uh, first part of the work was done. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Her husband has passed away. Um, and that's why they were planning on doing this much sooner. Uh, but he was very ill with cancer and has since passed away. So she's really just trying to finish the job. Um, and again, I, I will double check my records. I thought the original ones were um, the grills between the glass. Um, but if, um, are you saying that they are the permanently affixed? I mean, we could but probably put it on. I believe that what you call full divided light is what uh, our coordinator saying was approved uh, for this uh, project initially. Uh, at this yeah. point, the um, we, we've had a chance to hear what you have to say about the product uh, going forward. And if in fact, uh, the windows that are already there and have been replaced are not the right ones to begin with, it may be that we need to uh, provide an opportunity for you to check your paperwork 
for us to check ours and take another uh, look at the property unless other commissioners feel comfortable uh, proceeding tonight. But I would say that the, uh, the, the fact that of the windows being a color um, is probably a, a, a factor here uh, because frankly, if they were white, um, it would be very easy to uh, uh, see that they were grilled between the glass. Um, hey, Doug. So. Doug, this is Claire. You can't see, but um, Kim has the a certificate of appropriateness from March 13th, 2013 on the screen. And it does step specifically simulated, true simulated divided light with muttons permanently affixed to the exterior, interior, and between the glass. So we do need to check this. Actually, you know what? I'm looking at my notes now. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm looking at my notes now, and the ones that are there, we had they had the um, they do have the the full divided light, what we call it, which is basically the simulated divided light um, on there. Um, I'm sorry, that that was my mistake. I I just had another one of these earlier in the week and uh, or last week, and it, they were going to the they had the grills between the glass. My apologies, I got that confused. So those are, the ones that are there on the first floor are the full divided light. She was hoping to do the grills between the glass on the second floor, since it will really match what's there. I don't know if it's something that we can do. Um, we can do the grills on the exterior um, to help her combat some of the costs. Um, you know, so it will look like full divided light from the exterior, and is that a something that you would agree to, or does she need to have them on the inside also? Well, this is something we can certainly discuss during the meeting, but I really appreciate the additional information coming out because I was about to say those were the best looking GBGs I had yeah. ever encountered. Uh, now we know why they looked as good as they did, and our right. focus is the outside of the building. So we'll certainly keep in mind what you've had to say to us uh, at this point, unless other commissioners wish to say more at this point. In the absence of that, I uh, would just ask if there's anything further that the, any commissioners wish to ask of the applicant uh, or that the applicant wishes to let us know. And hearing none, uh, we will discuss this, I'm sure, during the public meeting in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for engaging with us on all this fully and being as forthright as you have been. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. You got Okay. Uh, so let me just get back to uh, <laughs> where I was. Sorry about that. To get back to my uh, agenda. Uh, someone else can call it if they like to. Number four. <laughs> Application 4997-20, Christina Cantwell, but it's uh, Richard is speaking for Trinity Solar, I believe. Oh, that's great. I see where I am now. I just had shrunk the wrong document. So, uh, yes, getting back to uh, the project at 14 Avalon Place. So if there's anyone that wishes to speak on uh, behalf of Ms. Cantwell, if she's not there, they can identify themselves for the record. Hi, good evening. Uh, Richard Corfell with Trinity Solar uh, here um, on behalf of the uh, homeowner, Christina Cantwell, uh, regarding the application at uh, 14 Avalon Place in Wethersfield. Welcome back, sir. If you could just give your business address, please, for the record. Yes, it's uh, 7 McKee Place in Cheshire, Connecticut. Thank you. And thank you for joining us again on uh, this application. No problem. Happy to be here. Is, is, would it be accurate to say that the only difference between the uh, original effort to uh, deploy uh, solar panels at this location and this application is their absence from the front facing roof of the main house? Uh, we have made some uh, stipulations as well to hide all of the conduit and place the uh, external inverters on the back of the home or on the inside of the home so that you can't see them from the street. 
and um, uh, the panels would be all triple black panels, black cell, black frame, black backing. Uh, there would be no panels on the main portion of the house on the front. And uh, all the panels that were on the garage uh, would be on the front section of the garage, but it would be a perfect uh, rectangle, no missing panels. There's no uh, vent pipes or anything to obstruct it. There's no um, jack-o'-lantern style uh, display. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, articulation. And at this point, I'll ask if there are any questions of any commissioners for the applicant. And if you could just identify yourself first, that would be great. Hearing none, uh, unless there's anything more that any applicant or uh, that the applicant or any commissioner wishes to add right now, uh, we appreciate your participation on this project uh, with us, and we will be addressing it very shortly at the public meeting. Uh, we just have one more application to address in the hearing. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move forward to application number 4998-20, Fall 160 LLC, the project at 160 Main Street. And do we have an applicant with us this evening? Yes. Hello, it's Larissa Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Tony's there too. So it's Antonio Lenoci, 160 Main Street. That's great. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this evening. And uh, we have a list of uh, modifications uh, or additions to uh, an existing project, I think, that right. you uh, are uh, presenting to us this evening. Thank you for the documentation that was provided. And at this point, I think I'll skip ahead and just ask if there are any questions of the commissioners for the applicants to begin with. Um, and if there aren't, then if there's anything you want to let us know about the project uh, beyond what we are already aware of, uh, you're certainly welcome to speak at this time. Thank you. Okay. I don't really have much to say. <laughs> yeah. Understand. Can we just are clarify there... for the record that it's four windows and not three? So. Right, is that right, Larissa? Yes, yeah. so the, the original picture was a barnyard barn and um, we didn't realize how long it was in the, um, that picture that I showed you was a much longer shed and because we can't go over um, 200 square feet, we are shortening that to three windows instead of the four for the transom. Understand. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for pointing that out, uh, Tim. Um, are there any other questions for the applicants? Thank you very much for uh, hitting so many of the uh, points that we would want to address and make sure are all taken uh, care of at this time. Uh, but if there's nobody else that has any further questions, we can move forward. Great. So uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting on all the aforementioned items. Is there, I'll make the motion and is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, is that Mark? Yes. Great. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries and the public hearing is closed and the public meeting is open. Beginning with application number 4994, Brian Wolf. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. This is Claire, I'll second. Oh, sorry, Claire. Sorry, that was Chris. Oh yeah. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, any discussion? I'll just say that it appears to be an appropriate um, reinterpretation of a uh, front step for uh, a modern era uh, that still uh, addresses uh, the need for it to be appropriate uh, on a, an older building. Uh, are there any other comments? No, I think basically what the applicant has come in with is 
a step very, very similar to what's existing there right now, simply bringing up to safety code with a larger landing and railings, which I know as I get older, I would certainly appreciate. Um, <laughs> I think in uh, overall, the look is not going to change whatsoever as far as the overall appearance of the house, um, unless you compare the two pictures side by side. So I think it's entirely appropriate change to the property. Thank you, Vasek. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 4995, the Lindquist application at 46 Oldham Road. Is there a motion? This is Chris. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. It's Claire. Thank I'll you. second it. And Claire second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion regarding this or is this a, I, I would just open by saying uh, this is a similar uh, circumstance to the last one, a very different home and building and era, but still a mild update that I think uh, still works on the building going forward. Any uh, further comments? Yes, certainly the natural stone veneer on the concrete steps will give it a much softer look and certainly more appropriate for the district. Uh, I, as, as per my comment last time, on the previous application, I am sorry to see the railings go, um, but code doesn't say you need them. And I think the house will read about the same whether the railings are there or not. So noted, uh, Batsik. Is there anyone else that wishes to uh, remark regarding any of this? Perhaps, uh, Emily, uh, I think we haven't heard from you yet. So I just want to make sure that you yeah. are addressed in case there's anything you wish to share. Yeah, I agree with Basic. I think it's a nice improvement on the steps for what's there. And um, thank you, Kim, for putting out the sample. That was good to be able to go by and see that. So yeah, I think it's um, going to be a successful project. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I just want to make sure that uh, in my uh, role on just voice here that uh, I addressed all of you. Thank you. Uh, I will call the vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the application, I'm sorry, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 4996, renewal by Anderson. Like the, uh, the project at 27 Wilcox Street. I will entertain a motion. Like to make a motion to table. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, for the purposes of discussion, uh, I uh, will just say that I appreciate that the back and forth between the coordinator and the contractor uh, brought us to uh, uh, a, uh, an agreement on what the current status is. Uh, the representations uh, about what the homeowner uh, is looking for are certainly interesting. I will just say that from, as I uh, previewed earlier, uh, our primary concern uh, and our uh, really our purview is limited to how the building looks from the outside. Um, if the building, if the absence of a grill on the inside wouldn't really be perceptible from the outside, uh, it is possible that we could go ahead and uh, proceed with an approval today. On the other hand, it does appear to be a uh, open uh, question uh, as to what the homeowner is willing to do in the long run and perhaps receiving the new bid from the contractor on uh, what she's proposing as uh, a halfway measure uh, is something that the homeowner should have a chance to do before we proceed with an approval. Is there anybody else that thinks I uh, have not summed up where we are? I think you did a good job, Doug. Uh, basically, 
there, I suspect that there will be some pushback from the homeowner because they're going to get a quote that's very different than they got originally. Uh, and certainly the grills on the exterior of the glass are important. And I think if there's any thought of resale value later on down the road, the applicant should seriously consider doing, replicating what's downstairs up, upstairs also, simply because people will look ex, ex, askance at the project if it's done in a less complete way. Thank you for that input, uh, Vasek. Is there anyone else that wishes to offer anything at this time? I, I guess we'll throw it out. If you looked at the pictures that were submitted with the application, it's the, it's the upper story windows on the front. There's four there, and then the balance are on the rear of the house. How are we going to feel if they come back with just you know, the applied on the exterior of the front four windows? Well, my, my take would be that. I, I, sorry, Doug. Sorry. I think then you might be talking about having three different window styles in the house. Um, and I think that may go to Vatsik's point. On the other hand, when it comes to a regulatory point, uh, I think that, Chris, you bring up the possibility that there might be an argument for an approval that would yield that. But I think it's something that it would be wise for the homeowner to reflect on. Um, is there anybody that has a problem with uh, proceeding with the motion as it's articulated at this point to put this off for further deliberation by the commission and the applicant? Okay. Hearing none, then I will call the vote. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is tabled at this time. Uh, at this point, we'll move to application number 4997. That's the Cantwell project on uh, or Avalon Place. Is there a motion? I will make a motion. Uh, Doug, this is Claire. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't jump in fast enough. I move. No, that's fine. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the panels be placed only on the back of the home. Oh, for the purposes of discussion, I'll second that motion. Is uh, in terms of discussion, uh, the certainly, I guess the, what you would be arguing. You wing it clear uh, is that there's an impact on the front of that garage that would do irreparable harm to the district? Yes, it is directly behind. It's directly at the end of the driveway and is very, very visible. I drove the streets. Um, the back of the home is not. Thank you. Are there other commissioners that wish to uh, speak to this uh, issue? I don't know if I necessarily have a problem with the visibility of the panels on the garage um, in back. It's set back off the road far enough where, I don't, you know, I've, I've got a house across the street from me that has panels on the garage that's, you know, on, on the cove and I, I can see them from my house. And, but sure. they're not on the house on the front of the street. So I guess I, I'm, I'm a little less inclined to be opposed to panels on the garage. Yeah. I will say that uh, we sh if we could poll everyone, um, I would be willing, uh, if, if you all are interested in saying so, I'll go through each of you. So that was, I think, Mark? Yes. Chris? Yeah, I, I agree with, uh, I usually don't have a problem with them on the garage like this. This happens to be a little bit closer in the way it's oriented. You get because you have the two driveways together there. You have an old Hubbard garage, and then this one was replaced. It's pretty prominent. I, again, on secondary billings, I don't have that problem uh, as much. Uh, I wish it was a little farther back. Uh, you have 12 panels on. There's quite a few panels on that. It's going to cover that whole face of the garage, but I, I would not have a problem on this utility building. 
Emily? Uh, yeah, I'm with Mark and Chris on this one. I I could go either way, but I I agree. I don't think the impact is going to be that great from the garage. Definitely agree that the the ones on the back of the house would not be visible at all from any angle. So I think that's great. The garage, you know, you can see them from one side of the house, not really the other. Um, they will be noticeable, but it also looks like these panels are pretty smooth. They don't seem to have those prominent grid lines we see sometimes. And I think with them being symmetrical and across the entire roof, I, I don't think it'll be um, nearly as noticeable as it would be if it was on, you know, the main body of the house. So I'm okay with them. Thank you. And Botsik? I will basically go with the majority, primarily because the panels are black and they are covering the entire roof. So that when your eye glances down that driveway, you see one solid black surface, which is not totally out of keeping with a outbuilding, which could certainly support a metal roof, which it would not look much different then. Understand, Vasek. Uh, Claire, I would ask you uh, at this point, if I were to uh, ask you to consider uh, altering your motion, um, I would probably join the others in uh, seconding a modified motion. On the other hand, if you want to vote on this one, I'll certainly provide it. Why don't we, why don't I withdraw the motion and you withdraw your second and someone else make a motion? Sure. Uh, in view of what we've heard thus far, I will withdraw my motion, my second, uh, I'm sorry, my motion, and you, uh, I can't remember who had the motion now, Claire had the, motion. the second, yeah, thank you. So I'll withdraw my second, uh, and, I'll, and I'll make a new motion at this point uh, to approve as submitted, uh, which includes uh, not only the uh, uh, no panels on the front of the main house, but the articulation of how the installation would proceed. And uh, I will uh, welcome a second. Uh, I'll second. This is Emily. Thank you, Emily. And again, I think Emily, as we were going through the uh, uh, polling, uh, really did bring up the point that the product uh, that we expect to see deployed here uh, is the kind that uh, won't have uh, irreparable harm in the district as some uh, of the products do. Um, I'm very respectful of Claire's concern and I think Chris uh, stated so as well when he talked about the visibility of the uh, building uh, and I think Mark did as well but I think overall this is uh, an application that's worthy of approval. I will uh, call the vote unless anyone else wishes to make comment. So are you saying as as submitted at this point? Yes. Okay, good. Just checking. Sure. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, opposed. It's Claire. Thank you, Claire. We'll note your nay and uh, thank you again for your uh, participation in this uh, discussion. And uh, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. And that uh, brings us to the last item on the agenda for the public meeting, or I should say uh, application wise, and that would be uh, application number 4998, fall 160 LLC. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Chris, this is Chris. Is that Chris? Thank yes. Uh, my discussion would just be that uh, this is a collection of, of uh, changes that round out uh, approve that are very much in keeping with our previous approvals of the work on the property. And so I, uh, uh, commend the applicants and the uh, town staff for working together to bring them to us. We thank you. Um, is there any further comment from any of the app, uh, from, from any of the commissioners at this point? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 
Aye. Any, any opposed? Hearing none, the application, I'm sorry, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Thank you everyone for your participation thus far. We'll just finish with the rest of the agenda here. Approval of minutes from March 31st. Is Linda here participating? I am, everyone was here. Thank you so much, Linda. As we, I will make um, a motion to approve them. John, uh, I'm sorry, this is Claire. I, I apologize, I probably was supposed to send the changes in, um, in advance and I didn't. But on the last page, uh, application number 499320, um, the last paragraph, uh, they keep saying they, 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 that needs to be we. Thank you, Claire, for catching that. So and every time it says they, it needs changed. to be we, it doesn't make any sense otherwise, so thank you. If that's a change that makes sense to everyone, then I can certainly uh, adopt that as part of my uh, motion to approve the minutes. And I can't remember who had the second, uh, but. I did. <laughs> I will accept the uh, amended. Thank you. And that's uh, Chris, right? Yes, sorry, Chris. Thank you. And again, at this time, we, uh, I always, uh, thank our uh, reporter for taking the time that she does uh, to uh, memorialize our deliberations uh, for uh, the now and the future. Thank you, Linda. That's appreciated. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the minutes are approved. We have the report of I'm sorry, at this point we have public comments on general matters of the historic district. Did anyone register, Kim or Gary? We did not get any, we did not get anything. So noted. Report of the historic district coordinator. None. Thank you, Kim, uh, for your efforts, especially during uh, this time when so many people are uh, working in a different way, you have uh, really seamlessly uh, kept the district going and we really appreciate all your efforts. Thanks. Oh, absolutely. Uh, finally, voting of officers. We have everybody here tonight, but we're missing two really important people, I think, which is our vice chair and one of our alternates. So if uh, all the commissioners feel comfortable doing so, I think we can put this item off to another agenda unless there's a desire to do otherwise. So uh, in the uh, absence of any objection, uh, I'll ask if there's any correspondence. None. And at this point, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. That's Mark. With yes. a second by uh, Mark and Chris. Chris. Great. Thank you, folks, for everything. I will uh, is my discuss is my discussion, uh, and uh, to the public for your patience with us uh, as we proceed tonight to try to do our best under the circumstances. Can I ask a question, Doug? Sorry. Yep. Nope. All those in favor say aye. Yep. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Actually, uh, can I ask one question? Um, just to ask Kim, how does it look? Uh, what does it look like for May? For May, uh, we have two for the next two, um, two new applications for May 12th. So it looks like we will hold the two meetings at least out the gate here. Yeah, and then after that we will have two more. It's funny, they seem to come in pairs. So it was two two stairs this time. Um, the next one is two fences, and then the end of May at this point I have two gutters. So it's, they seem to be coming in pairs, but um, no, no big projects. projects, no. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you for the preview. And in light of the fact that we had one table today, it's we'll have uh, three. Worth, worthwhile to make sure that we go forward with the meeting, if at all possible, uh, the first May meeting. So thank you, everyone.
Thanks. I'm sorry. Thank Next you. time I won't send out so many invites. I'm still <laughs> learning. It's, it's quite a project for me to learn all this IT stuff. So thanks for your patience. And congratulations to Doug. Radio. And Doug, you managed to get under an hour. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you all. Hey, Kim, uh, you can stop the recording. Okay, thanks, Derek. Thank, Thank you, guys. You Be safe. Good night. All right, take care.